are heading into week two of Iditarod and over the weekend, something that we can all relate to as we start off this Monday. How you feeling? Uh, pretty good. I'm trying, trying to figure out daylight savings time right now. <laughs> Well, here's to hoping that you all set your clocks ahead one hour. That was Richie Deal checking in, saying that he was feeling pretty good and that things are going well. He made his way through Shack Tulick Sunday and then checked into Koyak early this morning. Now, there's a number of awards that are given out all throughout the Iditarod. And last year, Dan Caduce won the always sought after Leonard Seppala Humanitarian Award. Now, he won it for his exceptional dog care after crossing under the broad arch in Nome with all 14 of the dogs he started with. And now that dog care is coming to the forefront for the musher who is realizing his spot in the race. Our main problem this year was the super warm temperatures and a little bit of rough trail we had at the beginning of the race. I had these guys kind of souped up a little too hot. And so they came out of the gate too hard and it took its toll. Now we're kind of on autopilot and I'm just let the front of the race go, and we're just going to take our time and cruise into Nome. Our crew also caught up with Wade Mars in Unilaclete. It is his 12th Iditarod, and when he's not thinking about his dogs on the trail, he thinks about a little bit of everything, life and priorities, especially with a new baby on the way this August. I came up here for a couple months to Alaska and ran the Yukon Quest, and now the Iditarod, and our first kid there he's about two and a half so I've been missing him a lot thinking about how hard it is to say bye and <laughs> be gone all the time so well, with the time change that means more daylight and a chance to see beautiful scenes like this absolutely gorgeous I mean this is video here of Ryan Reddington and Pete Kaiser they were coming across the sea ice last night now these two mushers closed in on their third checkpoint of the day over the weekend, but they're veteran mushers and they've run this trail before, but there are two rookies in the front of the pack vying for another top spot. Sports director Jordan Rodenberger has that story from Unilaclete. Well, after more than 700 miles along the Iditarod Trail, it can be pretty easy to get caught up in the Unilaclete checkpoint with all of this great food and the warm beds with some teams in the front of the pack taking measures to just blow through this checkpoint altogether. Ryan Reddington arriving into Unilaclete at 4.20 a.m. Sunday morning, the first time he has been in the lead at the first checkpoint along the western Alaska coast, staying for more than three hours before taking off to maintain his lead. Unilaclete's in my blood, and, and I'm very proud to be here, and, and um, thank you guys very much. Yep. Good night! Yeah. Meanwhile, Pete Kaiser and Richie Deal camp for several hours, about 20 miles outside of Unilaclete. Part of their strategy is to just blow through the checkpoint. Following the top three came two, battling for Rookie of the Year, Hunter Keefe and Eddie Burke Jr., who arrived 22 minutes apart and left three minutes apart. But if Hunter Keefe doesn't win Rookie of the Year, he certainly has a case for a sportsmanship award. As on the run from Grayling to Eagle Island, Burke dozed off, fell off the sled, and lost his team of 10 dogs who ran about 15 miles by themselves to the next checkpoint. When I got back to the checkpoint, they were all scared. It looked like I abandoned them. They were all sour attitudes. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't leave you guys, not on purpose. <laughs> Burke, with few options, began making the walk to Eagle Island until he came across another musher. Um, I thought I was catching a team because I saw a headlight, and then I realized that, oh, it was a person walking. And there's the ITI walkers and stuff, so I figured it must have been one of them. And then he kind of stopped really close to the trail, and I was like, oh, that's Eddie. Keith didn't hesitate to give Burke a ride, which would only hurt his race time. I did, didn't really think twice. I let him on because... I, would, I wouldn't want to be walking at 20 below. But Keith knows what his team is capable of. It really uh, showed how incredible my team was because um, he hopped on the sled, so we doubled the load. And you can ask him, not one dog ever looked back for even half a second wondering what was going on. They just um, chugged along like little freight trains they were. That was big time. It's being a true sportsman. And so what did the rookie learn after losing his team? Well, I rigged out myself a little... Uh, I got this right here, and it snaps to another line on my sled. So if I do fall off, I ain't going too far. And now the rookie tandem, who can't seem to separate from each other, are now braving one of the toughest stretches along the Iditarod Trail. 
And for those that are out of the Unilakleet checkpoint, they are on to the western Alaska coast where absolutely anything can happen. Some of the most wild stories from the trail taking place down that stretch. So be sure to keep tuning in to Alaska's news source for the latest along the Iditarod Trail. But for now, we're going to be sending it back to the studio. And let's get a check of the leaderboard here. So Ryan Reddington and Pete Kaiser both checked out of Koyuk very early this morning, and they are on their way to Elim. Now, Richie Deal was resting, and he checked out about 30 minutes ago, and now he's back on the trail. Looks like Matt Hall is still there resting with all the remaining mushers in our top 10 there, checking out of Shaq Tulik. And checking, of course, the Iditarod GPS tracker to see who is on the move right now. Of course, we mentioned it. Matching up there with the leaderboard, Reddington out front there, tracking at about a 7.3 speed. Pete Kaiser catching up with him, 7.8 racing right behind him. And as we mentioned, Deal just a ways down from Koyuk, where he left at about 5.49 this morning. Of course, after Elim, we got Hall there resting is White Mountain, which is where those mushers are going to take their eight-hour rest. And then we have safety, and then we have gnome. So things could start shaping up here within the next day or so. Of course, to keep track of the latest trail and news with all of the mushers, you can always check out our live blog on alaskasnewsource.com.